Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. We're at a film screening organized by the Jewish Culture Club. I would like to express my uh, deepest appreciation for the support of the Lithuanian Jewish community. I came to Lithuania from Australia for the first time in 1997 to meet my 93-year-old great-uncle Chatzko and to film his story. Uncle Chatzko, I'm your great-nephew Rodney from Australia. Rad vidit vas, moji In 1997, and now I've returned to show the documentary about his life. The audience tonight are vestiges of the once thriving Litvak or Lithuanian Jewish community. Like my great uncle Chatzko, the elderly people here are all survivors of the Holocaust. I thought I was making a film about memory and the past, but the traumatic events of nearly 60 years ago are now front page news in Australia. The Lithuanian government has asked the Australian government for information about an alleged war criminal. He's an Australian citizen named Antanas Gudelis. Aged 88, he's lived in Adelaide, South Australia since 1949. His haven is in the suburb of Prospect in this house. Gudelis was investigated by Australia's Special Investigations Unit for War Crimes until it was shut down in 1992. There was a lot of evidence, but not enough at the time to lay criminal charges. And since 1992, there's been no further investigation. But in Lithuania, I found people will never forget Gudelis. Australia is the only Western country to which many Nazi collaborators emigrated after World War II, which to date has failed to denaturalize, deport, expel, extradite, or convict a single Nazi war criminal. That is not true of any other country to which large numbers of Nazis uh, emigrated. This is the country that wants to host the Olympics. This is the country that will host the Olympics. So brotherhood, harmony, and Nazi war criminals? These charred remains of a Torah scroll belonged to a community amongst Lithuania's 250,000 Jews. But in just three years from 1941, 94% of them were murdered a higher percentage killed even than in Germany. To find out more about Antanas Gudelis, I went to Tel Aviv to meet the chairman of the Association of Lithuanian Jews in Israel, Joseph Malamed. Yeah, I saw with my own eyes what happened in Lithuania. All my family was killed by Lithuania. So far, his association has confirmed 12,000 Lithuanians directly involved in the killings, with estimates of up to 23,000. Antanas Gudelis is documented as being involved in the towns of Kaunas and Kupiskis. Here also Gudelis, Antanas, he was in Kupiskis. He was one of the heads of, the, uh, of these bandits who murdered the Kupiskis Jews. To the best of your knowledge, he was quite a senior person. He was a senior person, of course, he was a lieutenant, but he was probably the head of the, of the, whole, of the, of the whole operation. The Lithuanians are not going to sue and to, to, to bring anybody to a real trial. Because the moment you will bring a, a, a man like, like Gudialis, you will bring to trial, then 
all the world will know what the Lithuanians have done really during the war. And this, of course, the Lithuanians are not interested in it. Because the Lithuanians are still denying, till now, also all the documents, they have all the documents, the, Lithuan and the Lithuanians are still denying the guilt of the, of the Lithuanians, of the murderers. Lithuania was independent between the wars. But in 1940, Germany and Russia divided Poland, and Russia occupied the Baltic states. Antanas Gudelis was in the Lithuanian army, which became part of the Soviet army. On June 22, 1941, the Germans invaded Lithuania. They were widely welcomed as liberating the country from the communists. Even before the Germans were established, the pogroms began. Lithuanian militias, known as white armbands, began massacring Jews all over the country. That their own countrymen participated in the killings still fills many Lithuanians with horror. As a young girl, this Christian woman worked for a Jewish family. <laughs> Professor Conrad Quitt was historical advisor to Australia's Special Investigations Unit, which investigated alleged war criminals until it was closed down. He has a German translation of a 1967 trial in Kupischkis of five war criminals. Had he been in Lithuania, Antanas Gudelis would certainly have faced charges at this trial. From the witness statements, we know that Gudelis, as well as other soldiers, had deserted the Red Army immediately after the beginning of the war, and that he had hit in the deep forest surrounding Kupiskis. According to the evidence, Gudelis took command of these deserters, who were formed into an auxiliary police battalion, also known as a punitive squad. Their task was quite simple. They were used to cleanse Kupiski and the environment of Kupiskis of Jews, communists and other elements. Uh, regarded as hostile to the Germans and to the Lithuanians. There were some 42 witnesses called in to give evidence. And there was one particular witness, a defendant, who testified, and I quote from the protocol, I once met Lieutenant Gudelis and other soldiers. The following day, Gudelis uh, ordered all soldiers to come to the headquarters. When we went to the headquarters, Gudelis told us that we were subordinated to him. In other words, Gudelis was in charge. Gudelis was the commanding officer of that particular killing squad. With the passing of time, most of the Lithuanian witnesses are now gone but the documents still exist. In Lithuania, the government has not yet filed charges against Gudelis, despite incorrect Australian media reports that it has.